1900, known as Whiting Shaft. Mr. Whiting was the first superintendent out there. This shaft, the only one like its kind in the area. Six compartments that went straight down. Three to hoist rock. Two for men, one a spare. Four hoisting engines. Fantastic. It went down 8,100 feet, and then two shafts on an angle for a half a mile more. Mining those two at a total of 9,600. Bringing the rock up to 81, just like surface. Hoisting engines there, transferring the rock into skips to be brought to surface. Fantastic. Number four, Calumet. In direct line with Red Jacket Shaft. Red Jacket Shaft, due west. Number four, Calumet going down 7,600 feet on an angle. Into Red Jacket Shaft. So we're hoisting rock. Three compartments, Red Jacket Shaft plus number four calumet. Now, as the crow flies to South Hecla, number 12 shaft out here that goes down 5,700. As the crow flies a mile and a half, a tunnel from 5,700 into 81 Red Jacket Shaft. And as the crow fly, that dip, the dip not too great, electric railroad running from 12 to Red Jacket Shaft. So we're hoisting rock, three compartments Red Jacket Shaft, two skipways, number four Calumet, and all our supplies coming in over this electric railroad from number 12, Hecla, a bonanza. Beautiful mining, and the only one like it in the area, one of the deepest in the country at that time. Famous Calumet and Hecla, Red Jacket Shaft. Let's go back to 1892. Schoolcraft Mining Company. The Schoolcraft Mining Company operated seven shafts here in this area. In 1892, they shut down the whole operation. We don't know if they ran out of money or what the problem was. They couldn't sell their copper. But they did shut down in 1892. The Centennial Mining Company at that time purchased the property. And they turned all of the mining buildings into homes. At that time, there were so many people in the area that didn't have houses enough for them. So they turned the carpenter shop, the machine shop, the blacksmith shop, and all of these buildings into homes. My grandma ran a boarding house here we were living in the old schoolcraft pay office. Well, Centennial Mining Company just left the mines idle through the years, a hole in the ground. We could see the water. It was a fence around it, all of these shafts. The Centennial Mining Company, the other side of the highway, operated the amygdaloid shafts, two of them. And they worked those shafts till 1963 when they shut down. And they dismantled that property in 1965. In 1960, they decided 
to open up two shafts on this load, number three and number six. That's when this shaft was opened. And they worked this shaft until 1968, until the strike shut us down. After that, the home stake mining company came in and probed here. They worked for a couple of years, but didn't find it feasible to operate because the copper price wasn't high enough. So they left this area, and the area was shut down again. Well, since then, some of the former employees of Calumet and Hecla decided they would open the shaft, but somehow it didn't mature. And this shaft has been vacant, idle ever since. They worked on through the years, survived the 1913 strike, worked on through World War I, survived the famous 1930 Depression, worked on through World War II in the 1940s, and worked on into the 1950s when they diversified. At that time, they purchased the Wolverine Tube Company, Goodman Lumber Company, Flexonics of Chicago, Santa Rosalia Mining, Grants, New Mexico, Uranium Mining, and Tube Two Mills in Ontario, Canada. They worked on into the 60s, when in the late 60s, the great steel corporation union, United Steel, struck the Calumet and Hecla Mining Company. August the 21st, the contract was up. They met at various meetings into 1969, but could not agree. So that was the end of the great Calumet and Hecla mining after 102 years. I worked 45 years for this corporation, starting on the railroad. When the steamers went out, I went into security. The great Calumet and Hecla, of course, had 28 shafts here in Calumet. And after the 1913 strike, they bought up controlling interest in Osceola, Tamarack, Centennial, South Kearsarge, North Kearsarge, and the Amic Mines. By 1923, it was known as the Calumet and Hecla Consolidated Copper Company. And they worked on through these mines, of course, a lot of them, of course, were closed but they did work the good ones. But the population, of course, at that time was dwindling. We started out with 60, 70,000 people here, but it dwindled as time went on. The 1913 strike took its toll, the depression, and so on. The copper market, of course, fluctuating, but the great Calumet and Hecla continued doing the best they could under conditions, and worked on, of course, until the ultimate end in 1968. I was one of the last to leave the company. I stayed on five years after the strike ended, the corporation's mining. It was always a good place to live, there's always good people here. And today, 
at the age of 86, I can look back over time and say that I had a good life here in Calumet with the great Calumet and Hecla Mining Company. Jack Foster, speaking to you from the Kivana. Good night. <laughs>